I'm here at the Bespoke Show, which is the custom bike show here in the UK. So let's go and take a look at what amazing goodies I can find. Come on. Now, some of you will remember this bike. It will look familiar to you because I checked it out down at the Tour Down Under. It's the 51 Notorious McGregor. It delivered a knockout blow to me back then, and it has done again now. But moving on, check out this one. This orange 51, it's got written on the, well, painted on the frame here, ride it like you stole it. Uh, there's no one around, so I might try and steal it. No, only joking. But what's really interesting on this, I spotted it and I thought, hang on a minute, that's SRAM Red ETAP HRD. But it's a one-by system. But basically, I think it's a bit of a hack or a bodge. It doesn't matter, though. However, what I'd like, basically, those levers to control, because they're not able to control a front derailleur, how about this? A dropper post instead. So 51 bikes, if you're watching, try and integrate that next time. Worth a go, isn't it? So I've just been speaking to Prova, the uh, brand behind this bike, and well, I just got this put in my hand. It's basically a stainless steel 3D printed lug. There's like honeycomb in there. I'm not gonna try and eat it though. Um, now, I was told that this lug is actually inside here, and I looked and I looked and I just could not find it whatsoever. It's been basically silver soldered then to the top tube, and it's it's invisible, you cannot see it at all. Absolutely fantastic. It's not the only place they've done it though. Also done it on the dropouts. And also there's like a, a spigot of stainless here inside of the bottom bracket shell, which extends into the carbon seat tube. That seat tube, it's not the same diameter all the way through. It starts at two millimeters thickness and then thins out towards its ends. Um, one final thing actually, I'm just gonna mention on this bike, it's not just made of Reynolds 953, it's also made of Columbus XCR. So mixing it up a little bit, and that's something which the brand have been doing for a number of customers. I do like that. Right, I absolutely love a track bike. Fixed gear bikes, well, yeah, they're track bikes too, but check out this. Importantly, that's not magic. This is the Carousel Experimental Steel Frame. Uh, now, interestingly, at first, I wondered who on earth is actually making tubes like this. Uh, and in fact, it's just the standard tubes like this, so uh, Columbus tubing, and then basically you've got a steel sheet which is wrapped around it. Some extra little bits which are added on here, a Burt Composites saddle, a Burt Composites number holder, and apparently the inspiration behind this number, just for a bit of show, actually comes back from kind of rally and stock cars, DTM cars, that kind of thing. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And the designer behind it said to me, he wonders how it would ride over cobbles, because removing this seat tube, you may have a little bit of give there. Wouldn't like to ride that over cobbles much, though, myself. Just check out those disc wheels. You might end up smashing them to bits. Right, I'm here, I'm checking out the very own bike of Adeline, who actually runs the company Mercredi. This is her own cyclocross bike that she's gonna race on next season. Um, now, first up, the name Mercredi. I didn't know where it came from, and I kind of just took a bit of a guess, and I had to have it checked out by her. I was wildly wrong, but apparently, uh, now she's actually from Wallonia, which is a southern region of Belgium, and on a Wednesday afternoon, actually on a Wednesday, the kids don't go to school, so that's where the name comes from. Mercury is Wednesday in French, but less about that. Let's check out, first of all, that frame is actually powder coated, and you can still see on here, actually, is the TIG welds. They do remain there. Now, I spoke to Adeline, and I asked her why they haven't been filed down. She said, basically, it's not gonna improve the ride quality, so why would you want to do that? Plus, it actually shows a bit of the craftsmanship that's there. I must say, as well, those forks. They're certainly not powder coated, they are wet painted, and they match this, this custom fabric saddle. I do like a bit of custom matchy matchy, and hats off to this. It looks stunning, doesn't it? I'm just gonna sit here for a while and admire this bike from Demon Frameworks. As bling goes, it's bling. It's basically a glitter bomb. Even the gussets in the frame here glittered. Glitter bomb. Now, if ever you've been out riding on your bicycle and you thought there was a pack of angry bees chasing you, it's very unlikely it was a pack of angry bees. In fact, probably just one of these hubs here from Chris King. Just have a listen to that. Now, those do sound certainly very loud. Now, interestingly, just caught this bottle cage. 
basically it's the first ever that I've seen certainly of robot welded bottle cages. If you look at how uniform and correct these welds are on this cage, it's absolutely incredible, as is the weight, 29 grams. I thought it was gonna weigh a lot more than that. This is an Argon 18 Nitrogen Pro. But do you know what? It's not any old Nitrogen Pro because this one is custom painted by Colorburn Studio. Now, Bobby, the guy behind them, is the, is the guy who actually painted that Superman Lopez bike belonging to Miguel Lopez of Team Astana that we showed on the GCN Tech Show. Just check it out. Now, it may from a distance not look all that impressive, but trust me, this is super impressive. The fade does in fact vary you know, depending on what angle you're looking at. And it kind of reminds me of basically looking up into the sky at night. But enough about that paintwork though, just for the moment, because, yep, it's got the FSA Wii group set. So your levers, they are wireless. So the only cables coming out of them, believe me, are just for the brakes. Um, now they're matching up obviously to those derailleurs, which are then wired from a battery inside of the seat post for the control unit. And um, just had a little play around with it seems to be working really well. Um, you do actually set up the gears just on the front derailleur. So there's no junction box, nothing like that to actually play around with. Just through doing that, press a button and then you can basically use the paddle shifter on the brake lever. I like it. So how do you fancy having some integrated handlebars, but well, you're not quite sure on your stem length. The good news is these bars allow you to actually extend the length of your stem. How? <laughs> Peel back that rubber, and in here, basically you've got two kind of spacers which are serrated, and they slot obviously into place with one another, a bit like a jigsaw. Then you can put different widths in there, and then in turn, increase the length of that. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Got to do it up though to 40 Newton meters, which is obviously a fair bit, but naturally you don't want them just coming loose, do you? I like it. And finally, custom painted bike stands. How cool is that? might ask him to knock me one up. Now, if you're a forester and you want to use a bike as your mode of transport, basically to get around to your job, maybe this is the bike for you. Uh, I'm absolutely blown away by it. Well, look, for a start, chainsaw mount. You've got a bottle of Jägermeister in there. Nice to have a drink. Water bottle. Another kind of mountain dew down there. After all, you are in the mountains in the Black Forest. A pinion gearbox. Open the gas tank. Oh, if I open up the gas tank, Look at this. Make yourself a brew, maybe some porridge, who knows. Plus, toolbox on the back. Inside of that toolbox, I've already had a cheeky little look. There's a grill, which makes me think you could use it for a barbecue too. Whoever has this bike, it's like the MacGyver bike, basically. Mr. MacGyver, this is your bike. I'm here with the bike of Dan Craven, who of course is a friend of GCN. And this is his saffron frame, or complete bike rather, that he's just used in the Commonwealth Games down there in Australia. Now, strikingly, first of all, you're gonna notice this paintwork. It's basically, it's a nude frame, so there is no paint. How cool is that? What they do first up is they actually polish the frame. Apparently, it takes a very, very long time. I've seen the guy who's done it, and well, it looks like he hasn't slept for a, a month, probably. And then they basically apply a vinyl of the manufacturer onto the frame, and then they vapor blast it. So it's kind of like shot blasting, but cooler, if that makes sense. Now, it's TIG welded as well, and that saves, compared to fillet raising, about 140 grams. I mean, that's quite a considerable saving if you think about it, um, especially as it's, obviously, it's not a small frame, but it's not super large, but it's enough to notice that is for sure. Interestingly, this down tube, Columbus XCR, is the biggest size, so it's the most oversized one in the range. And it doesn't look that big. I think though, if it was in fact put onto a smaller size frame, it would certainly look bigger, but it definitely looks in proportion. And obviously it's got a full Campagnolo Super Record wired or cabled group set. Also, just check out that GPS. That is electronic, not wind up basically it's omatar and that was uh, one of those crowdfunding projects a couple of years back and they've just started delivering i do like that for a bit of navigation now saffron they actually decided to use a smaller diameter seat post than probably what some people would like so 31.6 27.2 in here they've said because basically they've handed this bike over to dan and it's his for the rest of his life they think it's going to give him a little bit of extra comfort in his old age that's kind of them isn't it he's not that old though or is he i don't know now, I don't think I ever thought I would see a bike made out of carbon fibre, wood, 
and also steel, or certainly not actually made into a bike that you could ride. So here, this is actually some ash, so that's the type of wood, obviously, and then it's steamed and then pressed and rather like shaped, basically, into that shape to allow you to have seat stays as well as a top tube. And then this is an NB Composites carbon tube for your seat tube, and then you've got yourself a stainless steel, well, remainder of the frame, essentially. But this bike is set up single speed, but due to the eccentric bottom bracket here, and also different dropouts you can put on place, you can actually run it as a 1x11, for instance. Uh, I think that's pretty cool, basically, because then you do away with those long, horizontal, rearward-facing dropouts that don't necessarily do aesthetics for bikes that nicely. Then, tucked away underneath here, this is so cool, and I luckily spotted it, is a magnet embedded inside that ash top tube where you can then store your Allen key to remove your through axle. <laughs> Now, I'm here with the bike of Tom Sturdy of the Bicycle Academy, and some of you will remember that name because Sai has been to visit him a couple of times in the past. Earlier on, you saw that bike from Provo, and check out this. This is basically using the same technology, but using titanium 3D printed lugs. And on that Provo, I couldn't see exactly where those steel lugs were, but luckily, Tom hasn't painted his bike, so I can see, see them and exactly how they work. Plus, check out that integrated seat clamp. Lovely. Oh, you're still here. I thought you'd had enough. Only joking. I could spend the whole day here. In fact, I am. Now, many thanks to all of the brands for showing me around their bits and pieces. I've been absolutely shocked by some of the things I've seen, but in a good way. Now, remember to like and share this video with your friends. Don't forget as well to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And for another great video, the latest GCN tech show, click just down here.